BYU Cougar basketball is back in action. Marcello. So wide open, Barcelo again. Oh. AB for three. Let's get you ready to root on the boys in blue. This is Cougar pregame live on the new skin BYU Sports Network. Cougar pregame live is brought to you by Mountain America Credit Union, Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Also brought to you by a Quick Quack Car Wash. Fast, clean, loved everywhere. And now, here's your host, Jason Shepard. Good evening, BYU basketball fans. Welcome into Cougar Pregame Live, presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Tonight, the BYU Cougars back at home as they try to bounce back from the first two-game regular season losing streak of the Mark Pope era. BYU dropped games at Santa Clara and at Pacific last week, sliding the Cougars down to fourth place in the West Coast Conference. BYU sits at 17-6 overall and 5-3 and in the WCC. Tonight's game is big for several reasons. The Cougars certainly want to right the ship, but tonight's opponent, USF, is a half game back of BYU, so the Cougars need to do whatever it takes to not fall any further down the standings. Now, the good news is BYU has already beaten San Francisco, and that victory was on the road on the hilltop. You'll remember it was a great come-from-behind victory where BYU was able to win just a couple of weeks ago. Having the Dons at home is obviously a big deal because of the way the Cougars play in front of the home fans and certainly the Rock. Uh, But also, let's not forget... In terms of the metrics, this is a chance to pick up another quad two victory. So this is another one that getting a victory tonight will look good on the postseason resume as we inch closer to the NCAA tournament. So let's dive in deeper into the matchup and this BYU basketball team. As we talk with assistant coach Chris Burgess, I asked Coach Burgess how practice has been this week as they try to regroup after a frustrating week on the road. Yeah, obviously a frustrating week, and we learned a lot about ourselves. Um, that it's, First of all, it's really hard to win. I don't care who you're playing. It's really hard to win because the other team's trying to win as well. And it's also really hard to win on the road. Practice has been, like, guys have been a little bit more focused, a little bit more chippy, um, and a little bit more, like, chip on their shoulder because we've, we've done things we've never done before as a, as a coach staff, as a team, which is back-to-back losses, quad four losses. We want to get rid of that feeling, and the only way to do it is getting back on the score and going at each other. So there's been it's been focused, but it's been a little chippy in there, which is great, right? It's controlled, but it's yeah. a little chippy of, like, each player is trying to compete and go at the other player. I'm always curious on the psychology of things because I know you're, you're a coach, but you also have to be a psychologist as well. After a team goes through adversity, and you guys have certainly gone through a lot this year, how do you guys determine how you're going to handle it moving forward? Because, you know, you could be heavy-handed and make guys run and make it miserable, or you could take the other end of the spectrum and go super light. How do you guys handle that? Well, that's a great question. So we talk as a staff, and we try to gauge what each of us thinks, uh, how our players are doing. You know, are they fragile? Are they upset? Are they a little, you know, chippy? Um, and what do we do moving forward? And we talk about each each uh, way to go about it and what we think our, how our guys will respond what are some unintended consequences with the way we kind of we coach them and then we and the end of the day coach has a coach and pope has a great understanding of what each player and what this team needs and so we just we talk about it as a staff and then we fill our players out and then we we bring them what they need which is there needs to be some chippiness in the gym but there also needs to be some joy right there needs to be some joy in this gym because um, like we're not just upset like you know as coaches the players the players are upset with themselves and so they know what they need as well so yeah that's it's it's something you have to um you have to really think about and discuss about because you, you want to treat it the right way like you talk about the psychology because you don't want you know a potential team that's fragile you don't want to push them over the edge where the lo- it leaks into uh, it leaks into the locker room a little bit and so you know i think we've done a good job and i think our guys have responded with you know how we've gone about it and i i can just tell they're they are chomping at the bit to get back on the floor in front of the merits uh, the fans in the merit center and, and to take on a really good san francisco team before we get into specifics about the dons what has been the focus in terms of what have you guys been focused on this week defending and rebounding um you know and getting getting stops like 
something with Pacific was, you know, there were times where we were scoring, but we, we weren't getting any stops. So we couldn't make any runs, right? And I think a lot of times, we were, you know, teams will rely too much on your offense. And it's, it's hard on the defense if you're not getting stops and if you're not scoring. So we've gotten back to this core of, like, we need to get back to what's, you know, won us a ton of games, which is, like, grinding, a little ugliness, and getting defensive stops and, and t- t- limiting second-chance points. Because that's how you that's how you go on runs is 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 you get two three four stops in a row and then the offense you know you you play better when you're getting stops and so we've tried to focus on that and we've been really trying to put different lineups out there who meshes with who who works with who who's successful with who who's the best communicating team who's got the best length who's the best rebounding team and so we've been focused on that because you know we're we're a team that's like we're a team like most teams in the country we're still growing we're still learning each other we're still finding different ways to win um you know even like a guy like a tiki his role is changing every day right his role is changing so that's what we're trying to do get back to getting stops and just like being the tougher team like if you watch the pacific game they won the they won some 50 50 balls that usually byu teams come up with right and like that's that's um you know as coaches we we, we got to do a better job to making sure that that doesn't happen again right and and you do that by coaching your guys up and demanding they, they get on the floor right and then they get those they, they, they get those extra possessions because we sometimes we're a little casual, right? We're a little casual. You brought up Atiki, and I was actually going to ask you about him a little bit later on, but since you brought him up now, I'll, I'll ask. You obviously work with the big men, and, and, and Foos, what Foos has done this year has been phenomenal, and we talk about Foos all the time, but I think we're starting to see a little bit more of Atiki assert himself a little bit. How proud are you of his development thus far? It makes me smile. It makes our whole team smile, not just me, but it makes our whole team smile because, you know, when, you, when he got here, you know, end of June, July, you know, his plan was different. Yeah. You, know, you had Richard Harward and Gavin Baxter out there. His plan was different, and he was being coached the same way, but it, it was just, you know, we weren't, we weren't really worried about what he was going to do. So to see him grow from, you know, a few months ago to now where he's catching the ball and he's just going up and he's trusting everything he works on. The one thing Atiki has, and everyone knows, he's got a great touch, mm-hmm. right? He's got a great touch, and he doesn't overcomplicate things. Like, he's not going to be out there, you know, like a Giannis or Kevin Durant where he's jab fake. He's going to catch it. He's going to go to his right or left-hand hook. And then he's rim protecting, right? He's rim protecting and he's trying to chase every rebound. So obviously individually, like personally, I, I'm super proud of the guy and, and see where he's coming. And, and then what gets me excited is I, I know where he, I have a good feeling and vision of where he can go, right? And that, and that gets me excited. But at the same time, you know, if you look at everyone's face on the bench or in the game, they're just, they smile because everybody loves Tiki and how hard he works and the joy he brings to this team. Um, but it, it's fun to watch, right? It's fun to watch and, and to see him and Foos, uh, who are really close roommates, just to see them develop and to start um, having some success and to struggle a little bit too. Yeah. Like, it's good that they're going to struggle a little bit because that's that's college basketball, right? And so it's fun to watch. What do you remember from the win on the hilltop? Nice come from behind victory. I mean, it was a big, yeah. big win for this program. What do you remember from that game? I remember, so this team likes to run. They like to run in transition. I remember we did a good job um, keeping them out of transition. You know, we had some turnovers that led to transition, but I don't really consider that transition often simply because it wasn't off a miss or it wasn't out of um, off a make. So I thought we did a good job taking them out of transition and defending them in the half court. Um, I remember that, you know, there were some instances instances that, uh, you know, they missed some shots. They missed some threes, right, where we left a couple guys open and, and the ball bounced our way that day. Um, but they missed some shots. But what I remember the most is, like, the fight our guys had of just, like I said, the 50-50 balls, the competing, the one more stop, and the belief where after the game was over, Everybody, yeah, everyone was excited, but there was this, this like, like exa- everyone was exhausted because they left it all out on the court. That's what I remember. And that's, if we can run that back, we're going to make mistakes. They're going to get a couple buckets in transition. They're going to make a couple threes. But if we can have that, like, determination and fight and grit, we're going to put ourselves in a good position to be successful. Do you guys like the round two with these teams where you're starting to see these teams a second time? In terms of the prep, I've got to assume it, it helps. Plus, you already have a game which you can go back and look at specific things against that player. How much does that help in preparation? A little bit of chess, right, where... You know, first of all, our guys know their personnel. Yeah. They know who they are. They know their tendencies because they played against them for a few years. They've watched them. You know, they've been watching them. We already played against them. But it's the, okay, what worked and what didn't. And 
And if you're trying to look at it from their coaching perspective, what are they going to do differently, right? Like, what are they going to do differently? And so that's what we try to prepare for. It was like, even though it was successful, a couple things and a couple, you know, schemes were successful for us on the defensive end, how are they going to counter, yeah. right? And so we try to prepare for that. And there was a couple drills we've done in practice today that we tried to simulate that. It didn't happen last game, but it could yeah. based on how we guarded them. And so that is something we look at as a staff. And then, you know, we show it to, we, you know, we prepare with our guys. But it's a little bit of a chess, like, okay, what are they going to do? What's their counter move? Um, how could they prepare knowing how we guarded or how we played offense? What are they going to do differently? What worked for us offensively? You know, are they going to try to mix it up? Mix it up? Are they going to change matchups, right? And so it's, it's, man, it's hard to beat a team two times. It just is, right? It really is. And so it's, it's a fun little game of chess out there. So hopefully, hopefully we can do a good job. All right, last thing. If you guys do one thing at a high level, what do you think that biggest key is, the one thing? If we are there defensively, if we're there on the catch and force these shooters to take tough contested twos and then we rebound the ball and push and transition here in the Marriott in front of our fans, we'll be successful. Sounds good. I like it. And it's, hey, it's good to be home too, right? Uh, We love being home. We love playing in front of this crowd. We think it's going to be a great atmosphere. Man, uh, I'm super excited. our Our guys are just as excited. So, yeah, it's great to be home. Coach, appreciate the time as always. Good luck against the Dons. Yeah, thanks, Jeff. Appreciate it. The great Chris Burgess, appreciate his time as always. It's a big one tonight. Should be a fun one from the Marriott Center. And that's where we are going to head next. It is our courtside conversation with Mark Durant. We will also discuss a lineup change. BYU going with the change to the starting lineup. We'll go over that when we come back. We'll talk with Mark Durant on the other side as Cougar Pregame Live continues on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Here's Jason Shepard with more Cougar Pregame Live on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Cougar Pregame Live is presented as always by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. It's time for our courtside conversation with Mark Durand as the Cougars get ready to host the Dons. Mark, uh, good evening to you. Uh, Let's hope uh, we have the same result. Maybe a little little more than just a two-point victory and come from behind fashion, but let's hope for the same result this time around against the Dons. How about it? Would it be too much to ask, Jason, that I just have like a 20-point win where I can just relax and talk to Greg and enjoy (laughs) the game and not have all this frantic panics at the end of the game and it's you're just on edge? I mean, I like those games fine, but I just need a break, and I think this team could use a break. I don't think they're going to get it tonight. San Francisco, like we talked about when we were there, is very good, Uh, really good team, got some great guards, a strong, strong inside play. Uh, this is one of the best San Francisco teams I've seen since I've been doing this, and uh, it'll take everything that BYU has. One of the things I like is that BYU knows how good they are, so I think uh, they'll, they'll rise to the challenge. I think maybe part of the problem last week was the fact that they kind of thought that they were going to win those games and, uh, and got surprised a little bit. I don't know how much of that's true, but uh, I think when BYU kind of knows that they're playing against really good teams, they kind of step up their game a little bit. I'm hoping that's what we see tonight. BYU uh, can take care of the Dons again. But again, uh, I mean, this this is uh, this kind of the brink here. I mean, we three, three losses in a row with Gonzaga Saturday. I mean, that's not a good spot to be. So this is a big, big game. All right, we'll get to the change in the starting lineup in just a second. But it, you were touching on this just a second ago. Real concerns right now or just a rough patch, do you think? Well, I think it's both. <laughs> Sorry to, to be wishy-washy on you. First of all, I think BYU's gotten lucky a, a lot of the way. Not lucky. I mean, they're, they're a good team. They find ways to win games. They grind it out, make plays at the end, and the luck kind of caught up with them on that road trip. They, they made some poor decisions at Santa Clara game. They should have won. Uh, then uh, had a chance to kind of get back into that game against Pacific at the end where maybe they should, shouldn't have won that anyway. But uh, – uh, so I guess what I'm saying is that this is a team, Jason, to me, that's not going to blow anyone out. I mean, pretty much every team they face, they're going to have a, 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 a disadvantage size-wise, uh, not necessarily athletic-wise, uh, but, but BYU's not a team that can overpower anyone. Sometimes you have teams that you just physically you overpower them. Uh, for instance, tonight you've got – uh, two six six guys starting. We'll talk about that. Gideon and 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 Foose. 
you got smaller guards in Barcelo and, and Tijon. Then you got a, an undersized wing player in Trevin Nell. And you look at what uh, San Francisco, they're going to be bigger almost every position except for maybe Shabazz. And uh, so uh, the, 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 all I'm saying is that that's going to be the case most of the time for BYU, whether it's injuries or whatever, that's kind of where they're at. So they're not going to overpower teams. They're not just going to show up like a Gonzaga and just run a team off the floor with their physical prowess, right? Yeah. And so how do you beat teams then if you're maybe not as big as them? Well, playing hard obviously is one. And be, this BYU team does that. Um, playing disciplined, that means not turning the ball over, and they've had trouble with that uh, um, last week. And and then it's about you know being, being better skilled players. And I think that's where BYU has an advantage is better skilled players. But they have to bring it every night. If those skill, if you don't shoot well one night, you know that that takes your biggest advantage away, and then you're going to be in trouble. And anyway, that's a long-winded answer to say that it's this team is just built that way. You're going to be in close games. You're going to have to find a way to win it. It caught up to them last week. They made a couple mistakes late, which they hadn't made. They lost a couple, uh, but I, I don't think it's a a real inherent flaw with the team. I think they could still do a lot of good things and win a lot of games, go to the NCAA tournament, but it's going to be there always. It's going to be a struggle that they're going to have to address, and they're going to be in close games, and then they have to make the right plays at the end. And, and for, for them for them to have success the rest of the way, that's just the way it is. The change to the starting lineup, and uh, this came out of the pregame interview that uh, the Greg Rubel uh, has done with Coach Pope. You'll hear the entire thing coming up in about 15 minutes. Uh, but the part about the starting lineup, the only change, Lucas, Barcelo, Nell, and Traore stay. Uh, as you referenced, Mark, Gideon George will step in to the starting lineup. Caleb Lohner will go to the bench. And I do want to I want to, I want to read this quote that Greg put out from Coach uh, and just talking about it. He says, quote, it gives us a little bit more mobility and we can purchase a little more space on the floor. We'll see how it works, end quote. Uh, what do you what do you make of the change and what BYU's trying to do tonight? Well, <laughs> I mean it's tough. Uh, everybody wants to start, right? I wanted to start when I played. Started some games, came off the bench other games. And it, it's hard, you know. I think BYU's and Coach Pope is is given a lot of latitude to Caleb, and Caleb's played good at times and has not performed well at times. But what at some point we have to say. Who's playing better? Who gives us the best chance to win? Right now, that's Gideon George. Uh, let's not say Caleb Lohner is going to go away and not help this team. He can still really help this team. But r- right now, if Caleb's on the floor, they can double Alex or whoever they want. They don't have to guard Caleb from uh, the three-point line. He just hasn't made the threes for whatever reason. He has not made the threes. He's not a threat. Uh, and he hasn't been particularly effective at the rim either. Gideon George has made three in, what, the last six games, and he seems to be playing much better. Uh, and when he's on the floor, teams have to guard him, right? So you, you can't do some of the things you would against Barcelo and, and, or, else, or else Gideon will make you pay. Gideon has been very effective at uh, getting to, to the rim from the perimeter and scoring in the paint. And so he's doing things better than Caleb. Is he a better player? I don't know, but he's playing better right now. And so you need, as hard as it is for guys, uh, you need to give your team the best chance to win. BYU needs to be able to spread the floor. They're going to be smaller, right? So you're giving up some things, although Gideon is an excellent rebounder, but he's going to be challenged defensively, especially in the paint. And uh, But he, he's going to be able to spread the floor. It's going to make it easier for other guys to get to the rim and, and get open. And uh, I just think it's the right decision at this point. I, I'm certainly not giving up on Caleb. I, I know he's good. He's struggling for whatever reason, like I said. This may help him. It may hurt him. I don't know. But I think it's best for, for the team right now. Uh, and like I said, it's gonna it's not just going to be all roses. It's, it's, you know, you give up some things when you ha- don't have Caleb on the floor. But I think it's the right move. Well, and, you know, the last time BYU went through, you know, this stretch where they, they had two really important games, you know, you, you split the games. I think you go into this week. You know, certainly the goal is to get the first one and then see what happens on Saturday. I liked what what Coach Burgess told me during our pregame interview that, you know, this week at practice, the guys have been locked in. They've been a little chippy, and he says sometimes that can be good because guys realize the importance of what's what's happening, and you're kind of running out of games here. And I like hearing that this team is coming into this week giving it the 
the attention that it needs because this is a really, really big week for what could happen to BYU in a month or so. Well, with the leadership on this team, I, you know, it doesn't surprise me to hear that. Alex and Tijan and others aren't going to let them not be focused. Uh, there's nothing that can focus a team like two losses in a row. It's a miserable time for everybody, uh, and you're really motivated uh, to get better. You're a little bit more uh, open to coaching from the coaches and uh, – you know, so when you're winning games, it's like, oh, whatever, we can do whatever, <laughs> that type of thing. But if you're losing, man, you're like, yes, yes, sir, yes, sir. And you, you listen and you do what the coaches are telling you to do. And then I think that combined with the prospect of this week and how important it is and the caliber of teams coming in, that's going to raise your level of focus as well. We'll see how it all pans out. I mean, I've seen it go both ways. Uh, a team drops a couple games. And it's hard. I mean, it, 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 can do, it can do bad things to your team. It can do great things to your team. I'm interested to see what it will do for this team. All right. The number one thing you want to see tonight improvement-wise from last week to tonight is what? I think just taking care of the basketball better. They weren't terrible, uh, as I recall, at Pacific. Santa, Santa Clara was, was not good. I think they had 17 turnovers. They only had 12 a- against San Francisco. Uh, there, uh, I think if you see around 10, 10 to 12 turnovers here, I think BYU will be in good shape. They just need to value the basketball and, and then score in the paint. I mean, they, they had so many opportunities uh, at Pacific and in Santa Clara where they missed missed in the paint. And it, it's hard to get those good, that good a shot and not to capitalize really hurts your team. So a little bit more focus on getting uh, on finishing at the rim and taking care of that basketball. Mark, great stuff as always. Thank you so much for the insight, uh, and we'll uh, hear you coming up in a few minutes with Greg. Thank you. Thanks, my friend. See you later. There he is, Mark Duran, our courtside conversation from the Marriott Center. We'll take a break. When we come back, wrap things up. We'll update you on some scores going on tonight in the West Coast Conference and in Top 25 College Basketball. All that when we return as Cougar Pregame Live continues on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Let's get you back to Cougar Pregame Live with your host, Jason Shepard. Welcome back to Cougar Pregame Live, presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics, getting you ready for the Cougars and the Dons. Stop by your local Big O Tires for no credit needed financing and the lowest price on every tire every day. Big O Tires, the team you trust. BYU women's basketball on the road. It's a big week for them. They're on the road at Portland tonight and then at Gonzaga on Saturday. And the Cougars rank 16th in the country, only one loss on the season. They are uh, trailing heading into the fourth quarter. The Pilots with a 53-42 to lead. Coach Judkins said this was going to be a tough trip. It would be a nice test. And the Cougars are finding that out right now. Uh, 9.47 to go in the fourth quarter. It is 53-42 Portland. All right, uh, elsewhere. Uh, these are uh, finals in uh, local college basketball. Stephen F. Austin defeats Utah Valley 78-59, and it was Dixie State losing at Sam Houston 77-53. to In the West Coast Conference, number two Gonzaga leading at San Diego 21-16. Santa Clara and LMU all tied up at 19 apiece. Fans, remember when the Cougars win, you win with Papa John's Pizza. With the BYU win tonight, pizza will be 50% off at PapaJohns.com tomorrow using the online promo code BYU50. This offer is good at any Utah location. Coming up next, back over to the Marriott Center. The Cougar Pregame Coaches Show with Greg Rubel is next. This is BYU Basketball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. It's time to get the inside scoop on today's game. This is the Cougar Pregame Coaches Show, brought to you by Zions Bank. For a financial slam dunk, Zions Bank is for you. Also brought to you by Big O Tires. Your local Big O Tires has financing available. Big O Tires, the team you trust. Now let's head back to the Built Bar courtside seats and join the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Good evening, Cougar basketball fans, and welcome courtside inside the Marriott Center on the BYU campus in Provo, Utah, as tonight 
BYU plays arguably its most crucial game of the year to this point. It's a bubble battle between the Cougars and the Dons of San Francisco. It's a game with a win-and-you're-in kind of vibe when it comes to the NCAA tournament hopes of each team. I'm your play-by-play presenter, Greg Grubel. With me, the former BYU hoopster, he's Mark Durant. And, uh, Mark, we've got two desperate teams squaring off tonight. San Francisco has already lost home games to BYU and St. Mary's in addition to a loss at Gonzaga. The Dons need quality wins to stay on the right side of the bubble. BYU has lost back-to-back brutal games, including its first real bad loss of the Mark Pope era at Pacific. With Gonzaga coming into the Marriott Center in 48 hours, it's imperative that BYU get at least a weekend split. Feels like a must-win for both teams. Yeah, I mean, yesterday was uh, Groundhog Day, right, Greg? It was. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do my groundhog. I'm going to be uh, Pro Votani Mark here. I'm going to tell you about the next six weeks, okay? Okay. Six weeks. So uh, you, look at the, you look at the field. You got Gonzaga. I mean, they're good. They're going to win the conference. I mean, that's just the way it is. BYU's lost four games. Uh, they're not going to lose three. Three, three, three games. Gonzaga's not going to lose three games. Um, so what you're trying to do, is, so they're going to get a bid, obviously, and I think there will be two more bids available for the conference. Some people say three. I say two bids. So what you've got to do is separate yourself as opposed to those other teams competing for that. So if you can sweep San Francisco, which BYU have an opportunity tonight, or you can sweep St. Mary's, which they'll have an opportunity to go on the road and do that, that's going to separate them. Even if St. Mary's finished ahead of BYU in the conference, you, you could say we, we swept them, we took care of them, this is who we're competing against for this bid. So that's what is really important to me. Yeah. That's why this game is so important is it's a chance to really separate yourself from another team that's going to try and take that from you in San Francisco. Great opportunity tonight. Uh, a lot on the line, I think, for this team mentally, what they want to do in the future. And, and uh, th- this is one of those games. I mean, no game's a must win until the last game you play. Uh, but th- this is a really big game for BYU for those reasons. He is Mark Durant. The other Mark, Mark Pope. His pregame comments are coming up next. Previewing tonight's set two with San Francisco as the Zions Bank Cougar pregame coaches show continues live from the Marriott Center on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. You're tuned to the Cougar pregame coaches show. For more with head coach Mark Pope, let's rejoin your host, Greg Grubel. Tonight, here at the Marriott Center, BYU Cougars play to even their season record in Thursday games at 3-3. One week ago tonight, BYU gave one away at Santa Clara, and the crushing loss seemingly carried over to Saturday in Stockton as BYU lost a resume denting game at Pacific. In tonight's pregame conversation with BYU head coach Mark Pope, presented by Zions Bank for a financial slam dunk. Zions Bank is for you. Coach Pope talks about a lineup change and about hopefully hitting the reset button here at home. We're just trying to grow and get better. That's it's, it's really nothing changes. You know, we're trying to get better every single day, and and uh, this is a huge opportunity for us to go out and try and compete with a great team. And so that's just what it is, right? Um, hopefully, we'll seize the moment and and come out and play great. That's what I expect our guys to do. You talked earlier in the week about um, it being less about lineups that is starting or otherwise, and more about combinations and effectiveness and how teammates are playing off each other. That said, in the first for the first time in six weeks, you'll you'll make a change in your opening group tonight. Yeah, we're just trying to. T- Tinker a little bit with combinations. That's that's the key. Uh, you know, we have ten great players. We, we actually have seventeen great players. We have we have nine that are playing a lot, and a tenth that you know gets in the rotation sometimes. And and uh, they all are making huge contributions. In fact, the guys off our bench are, are most nights more productive than some of the guys that are starting. So it's just about putting the right piece together at the right time with the right matchup, and, and that's what we're searching for right now. So how do you plan to go tonight, and the motivation behind that? We'll go Alex Tijon, Trevin, Gideon, and Foose, um, and um, you know it gives us a little bit. More more mobility a little bit more we can purchase a little more space on the floor it also allows our guys coming off the bench some of those guys are actually functioning at a really high level together so we'll see how it works okay what do you take from the first meeting with san francisco great team unbelievable size unbelievable athleticism i mean they're huge and they didn't even play their 7-2 center who's been playing some some minutes recently um so just their size and their physicality is daunting and then and then like us they have a veteran 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 backcourt that that is, um, you know, been together for three years now and, and terrific. And they're they're uh, they're both 
really, really tough matchups. And then their front court is also veteran, veteran, veteran. And so uh, a great team. They've had a great season. This is a big-time matchup. You held uh, Bouye and Shabazz to, to subpar shooting numbers, and Masalski didn't really go off. He had one of his uh, you know least effective games of the year uh, stats-wise. Yep, we had some good fortune. Uh, you know, uh, we had some, some of the guys didn't shoot the ball well, and that was important for us. We, we've been successful minus a couple games uh, defending from the three, and that's obviously hugely important tonight. And then, you know, Masalski is a guy that averages four offensive rebounds a game, for example, and that gets him going. And then, and then him on the pick and roll, uh, him in the duck gets him going. And those are things we have to find answers for tonight. It's, it's a really huge key to our defense. Other than that, is it the same to do list from a couple weeks ago, or there's something that popped up that there's no, we need to take more attention to this? Well, San Francisco does what they do. Um, they're great in transition, first and foremost. Uh, they really, really shoot the ball well, especially with Bouye. You know, Bouye is so long, he can kind of pass over the top of everything, get the, deliver the ball wherever he wants, and he's so explosive downhill. And then they make hard shots. We've seen it. You know, we've seen it uh, where Shabazz has made, you know, impossible shot after impossible shot. And, and Bouye, at times in games, can kind of take things in his own hands and, you know, just come up with isolation, ridiculously difficult step back shots. And um, so uh, a lot of the challenges are exactly the same. We feel like they miss some things on film that they're probably going to address uh, this week. So we've tried to um, uh, pay close attention to our smash downs and our first passes. And and um, uh, so it's going to be, you know, listen, it's second time around a league. Uh, it's it's uh, it's a great league this year, and this will be a great game. Suffice it to say, it's massive for both teams, right? Yeah, every game. I mean, you know, we, we sound like a broken record because every single game is massive. But that's how league play is. And that's when you're, you know, when you're in contention to, you know, to stay in this kind of top 30-ish area in the country, you, the only way you do it is by winning every game. And so um, that's the that's the gift these guys have purchased themselves is the pressure that comes with every be- game being massive. This one's massive. Saturday's <laughs> going to be bigger, and next Thursday's going to be even bigger. It's the way it is. Coach, thank you. Good luck. We'll talk to you post game. Thanks, G. That is Mark Pope. Time now for tonight's keys to the game, brought to you by Ford. Built Ford proud. Mark Durant has keys to tonight's contest. So BYU held San Francisco to three of 23 three-point shooting uh, on on the hill. That that's amazing because San Francisco is one of the better three-point shooting teams. They shoot a lot, make a lot. It's not going to happen tonight, uh, but I think if BYU, I'm going to say 33%, keep San Francisco under 33%, that'll be a good sign and, and under 12 turnovers for BYU. Do those things, take care of the ball, and limit those three-point opportunities. Get on them on the catch, make them shoot bad shots. Then uh, I think BYU is going to be in good shape here. Those are Mark's keys to the game. As we go to break now, we remind you that Smith's has all your fresh game day grilling favorites. When you shop today, you can get free pickup on orders of $35 or more. Just order from the app or at Kroger.com and make your game day great. Smith's, fresh for everyone. The BYU Store Cougar Tip-Off Show is coming your way next on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. It's almost time to hit the hardwood. This is the Cougar Tip-Off Show, brought to you by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Also brought to you by the BYU Creamery, the classic BYU tradition. Have a scoop today. Also by Siegfried and Jensen. Siegfried and Jensen has been helping Utah families for over 30 years. Now let's head live to the Built Bar courtside seats and join Mark Durant alongside the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Good evening once again, Cougar Nation. We welcome you back courtside inside the Marriott Center. We're getting you set for BYU and USF. Cougs 17 and 6 on the year, 5 and 3 in league. The Don 17 and 5, 4 and 3 in conference play. This is the BYU Store Cougar tip off show. It is brought to you by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Greg Rubel, Mark Durant with you courtside. Our studio host is Jason Shepard. Our control board operators, Corbin Radford and Tanner Graff. Terry South is our coordinator. Producer, our BYU radio engineers are Sean Fay and Barry Squires. Our broadcast interns, Bryce Noakes at BYU Radio and Trevor Rich here at the Marriott Center. You are tuned in on the new skin, BYU Sports Network, led by our satellite radio flagship, BYU Radio, Sirius XM 143, and our over the air flagship, KSL News Radio 102.7 FM and 1160 AM. We are also on the BYU Radio app, the BYU Cougars app, the BYU Game Day app, the KSL app. Plus, we have the online streams going at BYUradio.org, BYUcougars.com, KSL.com. Lots of ways to listen in tonight. Well, uh, Mark, uh, tonight does mark the first lineup shakeup 
since Fuseni Torore entered the starting group on Christmas week, Christmas Day actually. Caleb Lohner is replaced by in the opening group by Gideon George. Gideon opened the season as a starter. He's hit threes in six straight games coming into this one. His rebound numbers are even with Caleb's. Coach Pope is going to give Caleb a different role tonight. Let's see how he, Gideon, and the team all respond to this new rotation look. I, I don't love <clears throat> changing lineups simply because it means either you had an injury or the, your team's not maybe playing the right way. Or, uh, But I think it's time. I think uh, the way, if you look at those two together, the way Gideon has played, he's been more effective than Caleb Lohner on the floor. So you want to have the best guy on the floor. He's a better three-point shooter. Like you said, he rebounds well. You give up some size, so that's an issue you got to take into account. And hopefully it helps everybody. It gives Gideon a little more confidence to do the good things that he does. And maybe it helps Caleb to just sit back and look at the game a little bit. He had some foul trouble issues as well. And he can just kind of figure out where he can go in and help the team. It's always risky to, to change things up at this point in the season. But I think it was due and, and it was deserved. I mean, some guys just earn the starting job. And I think Gideon has earned it. And uh, we'll see how he does. But he's been playing really well lately. And I hope this is a motivation for Caleb to keep getting better and, and do some because he could really still help this team. Imagine Ca a good Caleb Lohner coming off the bench. That's pretty frightening. So I, I hope that's what we see. But we can only play it and see how it turns out. Now, don't, not only do you not lose any rebounding impact, but uh, Coach Pope in our pregame chat talk, talked about creating more space on the floor because Gideon is more of a threat right now yeah, than I Caleb mean, Lohner. Te teams don't have to guard Caleb right now. And they can double team Alex off of Caleb. It's just, he's just not a threat. Not really a threat uh, in the paint either. So it, it hurts BYU offensively when he's on the floor but I would tell you here's the converse uh, the converse set you got Masalski you got Tape I mean you got some really big guys in there and, and as good as Gideon is he's 6'6 and Foose is 6'6 I mean it, it's that's the trade off there so you may be better offensively but how will that affect your defense and rebounding against such a big team in the Dons we'll find out the answers to those questions here shortly as we go to break we'll tell you that mouth-watering Hawaiian style food is just minutes away from the Marriott Center fresh off the grilled chicken teriyaki steak and sizzling shrimp all at Coconut Island Grill with the island flavors your mouth's been waiting for text the word aloha to 61090 for a 15% discount off your next visit that's the word aloha to 61090 for 15% off at Coconut Island Grill. Coming up after this break, we'll hear from USF head coach Todd Golden as the BYU Store Cougar Tip-Off Show continues live from the Marriott Center on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is the Cougar Tip-Off Show. Let's head back live courtside and join Greg Rubel. The BYU Store Cougar Tip-Off Show continues ahead of BYU in San Francisco. By the way, they've uh, slid the tip time back five minutes, so 8-10 Mountain Time is now the new official tip time. BYU tonight playing for a fifth straight win over the Dons. Since joining the WCC, BYU's won 8 of 10 Marriott Center meetings with San Francisco. Last month on the Hilltop, BYU rallied from down 10 points in the second half for a two-point win. It snapped USF's 11-game home win streak. And tonight, BYU is a team on a long win streak at home. 11, make it 12 consecutive wins for BYU here at the Marriott Center. A short time ago, I visited with USF head coach Todd Golden to get his thoughts on just what's on the line tonight for both teams here in Provo. Honestly, I think both of us are in a very similar spot, and whoever wins this game is going to have a, a very good standing moving forward in terms of making the tournament. You know, this is going to be a quad one game for both teams. Um, or, yeah, I guess for both teams. And uh, it's, you know, both of us in a situation now where we could really use one. And, uh, you know, both teams are in a spot where they've had a really good year, and this could be uh, a little bit of that jolt to get them into NCAA, not only tournament consideration, but comfortability for a while. And both teams have already experienced the dramatic highs and lows of league play <laughs> no doubt about it oh uh, man we've uh we've actually played really well in league obviously against you guys the first time lost by two and then uh, against St. Mary's the same we feel like over the course of the whole league we're doing really well but we just have to finish a little better when we have leads uh and so tonight it's going to be a lot of the same you know I thought we played a, a relatively solid game against BYU the first time around it's a two-point loss in a game in which you shoot probably your lowest numbers for the year right. so is that is, is there encouragement in that it's like well we can't shoot much you know much worse and we 
you're right there. Absolutely. I think, you know, after looking back and evaluating the game, and part of it was what BYU was doing defensively, but I think a lot of the things like our pillars, defending, rebounding, take care of the ball, we were very solid in all three of those areas. I thought we did well enough to give ourselves a good chance to win. Uh, but three for 23 from three against BYU is not going to be good enough, and uh, we understand that. So if we can play a similar game in those other areas and then obviously shoot the ball a little bit better, uh, we think we have a shot tonight. It's not often you get outscored from the arc, but when it happens, that, 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 that's been when, you, uh, been when you've taken losses this year. Yeah, it's a bad formula for us, for sure. Uh, BYU, I think they were 7 for 19 in that game, so shot a little better than 33%. We And we just had a, a surprisingly poor shooting game, but it can happen. And, uh, you know, tonight, hopefully, you know, in, uh, in a difficult, more difficult difficult setting you know I'd like to see us shoot the ball better you get a BYU team that has dropped back-to-back regular season games for the first time under head coach Mark Pope and they're coming home so how do you look at it that way you know honestly I've I've tried to put myself in Mark's position and and BYU spot and honestly I think it's going to be one of two things it's kind of an obvious statement but there is a little pressure on them we have they have Gonzaga coming in on Saturday night right behind us and I I would assume if this is a game that they're like we got to get this one this weekend because Saturday's not going to be easy um so there is some pressure in that moment, but at the same time, coming home, playing in front of you know 16, 17, however many thousand this this place holds, uh, would give them some confidence and a lift. So uh, honestly, I think it has a chance to be a, a fantastic game, and I think it's going to come down to whoever. Uh, I think it's going to be a close game, and uh, whoever executes or makes more shots down the stretch, I think we'll, we'll end up winning the game. Coach Golden, always a pleasure chatting with you. Thank you for the time, and we'll see you again in Las Vegas. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Thanks, Greg. That is USF head coach Todd Golden. The Cougar Tip-Off show continues right after this on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Welcome back to the Cougar Tip-Off show. Let's rejoin Craig Rubel. All right, so BYU and USF coming up just after the top of the hour. 8-10 officially now is our tip time. Uh, last time we will see on this floor Jamari Bouye and Khalil Shabazz here at the Marriott Center. Mark, those two guys have been tremendous for years now. They, are, they alone are a handful, and they've made tough shot after tough shot after tough shot against BYU and every other WCC team for seasons now. But when you add Yellen Masalski and Patrick Tape to this team up front, now you've got a deep and really complete team, and no surprise that the, the Dons are where they are, pressing for an NCAA tournament bid. Yeah, that's a dynamic duo. They've been there forever. They're so good, can beat you by themselves, have beaten BYU by themselves, but there was always, they just didn't quite have that other piece, and Masalski is the piece. I mean, he is tremendous. Three double-doubles in a row, uh, 17 and 16 in his last game. I mean, he's a super player. And I think Tape may be the best athlete in the league. I mean, he's just a specimen. BYU had all kinds of nightmare matchups with him, with Caleb Lohner. That's going to be a real tough matchup for Gideon George. All right, BYU men's basketball is dunking on cancer through generous donations. Each BYU dunk during WCC play will raise money for BYU's Simmons Center for Cancer Research. For more information on the Cougs' fight against cancer, go to sccr at chem, that's C-H-E-M, chem, dot B-Y-U, dot E-D-U. Our final thoughts before tip-off coming your way next. This is the BYU Store Cougar Tip-Off Show on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. The Cougar Tip-Off Show rolls on. Let's head back live courtside. Greg Rubel, Mark Durant getting you set for BYU and San Francisco here at the Marriott Center. Mark goes without saying, every team likes a strong start, but uh, from where BYU was last weekend, dropping those back-to-back games in particularly heartbreaking fashion, just to settle in and hear the home fans kind of get loud and kind of buoy this team along might be extra important tonight against San Francisco. Every year you're going to have a little bit of a slide, a little bit of a slump at some point. It's nice for BYU to be able to come back in this building where they have not lost with these fans, a a chance to to win a big game. This may be uh, the boost that BYU needs. Now, you mentioned in our pregame keys to the game that uh, 33% or lower from San Francisco would be your desired three-point percentage for the Dons tonight for BYU to have a shot. Three-point line so key to this Dons team shooting 36% from deep only three times all year. Has the opponent made more threes 
than San Francisco, but USF is 0-3 in those games, and one of the teams to make more threes than USF was BYU on the hilltop. BYU didn't shoot great. I think 7 for 19, if I recall, but 1 for 10 in the first half, 2 for 13 in the second half. That is an incredibly uh, anomalistic, if that's a word, night for the Dons. And BYU probably won't be that good, but if they can get kind of close to that, they'll be in good shape. So we hit on the Gideon George Caleb Lohner switch in the starting lineup. It's the first lineup change since Foose went in on Christmas Day. And the guy that replaces Foose when Foose sits is Atiki Ali Atiki. And game by game, Atiki's getting just better and better. We're seeing a true emergence of someone who's still very, very raw and learning in a lot of ways to play this game. Yeah, it's just how fast he's learning is what's impressive. He's got such a soft touch inside. He's got good patience. He's growing uh, exponentially with his skills. It's fun to watch. Well, BYU and San Francisco a meeting tonight here at the Marriott Center in the second of two games they'll have this year. BYU has won 13 of the last 17 meetings against San Francisco, by the way. Uh, here at home in the West Coast Conference, BYU's won 8 of 10 games. And all-time versus San Francisco, BYU in Provo has a record of, uh, a, uh, rather, in San Francisco, BYU actually has a winning record as well. So whether it's home or away, uh, Cougars have had the advantage over the Dons. We're going to pause now as our colors have been posted. Let's bring you our national anthem. Tip-off of BYU in San Francisco. Coming up next, this has been the BYU Store Cooper Tip-Off Show on the new skin, BYU Sports Network.